Hello everyone. In my last video regarding the native instruments ecosystem, I showed you how you can use the contact sample player without owning a complete control keyboard, just using native tools on your Windows operating system to load patches and play them accessibly. Today, I will continue the series by taking a look at complete control and how you can use that on Windows without any complete control keyboard. A small disclaimer though, you won't achieve the same accessibility and flexibility that you can achieve by using an actual complete control keyboard like an M32, but it is usable and I'll show you everything and tell you everything you need to know about complete control in this video. No time to waste, let's get into it. Let us begin with what Complete Control actually is. Complete Control is something that is quite similar to how your DAW works. It hosts several plugins. It all started with Native Instruments' own products, Reactor, Contact, Absinthe, and all the other products. And Complete Control was meant to wrap around those products and make it easily available to a hardware range of products, their Complete Control keyboards. The goal was to allow the user to control those plugins just by using knobs and the usual keyboard keys that you have. They also tried to create a software that allowed you to quickly scan through all the various patches you have independently from the actual player or plugin that the software is running in so that you have a kind of archive where you can go through all the patches and different sounds you have, preview them and load them without even having to know which plugin you're actually using right now. So although all of this might look quite complicated, what does this mean for you? What does Complete Control do for you exactly? Well, if you had Complete Control with a Complete Control keyboard like the M32, then you would get the possibility to browse through all your sounds via the Complete Control keyboard, preview them and load them on the fly without even having to know if it's running in contact or if it's running in whichever else plugin you have loaded and configured into your complete control. You don't even care. You just load it and behaves quite similarly no matter what you actually load it. The various parameters are mapped to the knobs that you have available on your complete control keyboard. Usually there are eight knobs and you can switch between the pages and then you can just play it without even ever having to touch your system. If you've watched my contact video, then you know that if you load contact directly within your Reaper DAW, for example, or Logic or whatever, if you want to change parameters, you would have to fiddle around with the DAW all the time. You'd have to find the parameter, tweak it, and then get back to your keyboard and play it and see if it changed anything. If you're using complete control, in the best case scenario, you don't even have to leave your keyboard. You just do everything on your keyboard, configure it properly. You can even stack effects on top if they are complete control ready and you don't need to touch your door in order to do that. The previewing feature is something really useful too, as I've mentioned before. You can just scroll through your browser on the keyboard and you will get a short sound or long sound, depending on what the library vendor decided, and know what is hidden inside the patch without even having to load it. Now, that is what you should be able to do in theory. How does it actually look like from an accessibility perspective? Well, we really depend on how the library vendors mapped their controls to complete control. It's not like you can take whichever instrument you have, plug it into complete control, and it's just working out of the box. The library vendors have to configure their complete control experience, so they have to map the complete control knobs to the parameters, and not all of the vendors are doing this well. Some of the vendors do have major issues. I've created several videos on sample libraries which already have issues and are not going to fix them soon because they are running with their default system and the system already got flaws so they'd need to change this basic concept and re-release all their products which is not going to happen to be honest. But these are the little quirks we have to live with. For example, 
most of the orchestra sample library renders do have knobs which control the microphone position volume levels. But as they are disabled by default, you can turn the knobs to change the levels, but the microphones won't get enabled magically. They just forgot to script that in, so that's not going to happen. You can control the levels, but the microphones are turned off, so in the end, you won't change anything. You will have to toggle the microphones on via the UI, no matter what, before actually having the knobs do something with the actual levels. Apart from that, as I've already mentioned, you always have to deal with the vendor forgetting something when mapping the complete control knobs. That is exactly why my other video, how to run contact without complete control, is absolutely relevant. Sometimes the vendors just forgot to map some really important parameters. In that case, there's no way to get them back into complete control, at least not with outsider help. You can change plugins and snapshots. You can add other parameters that in theory are there for the instrument, but are not yet mapped, but not in an accessible way. You'd need cited help in order to do this. And sometimes there are parameters which cannot be mapped to a knob. A knob can just control a kind of number range from a start value to an end value, right? That's what a knob does, especially if you cannot press it. You can control on off toggles by turning the knob, which is great. You can control any parameter that starts at a value and ends at a value, but you cannot control parameters which need tweaking further than that. For example, a word or phrase builder in a choir or an input box where you actually need to type words or something like that, that is not controllable via knobs, obviously. So the parameter can also not be mapped to a knob on a keyboard. So that is where accessibility ends. Apart from that, what does complete control do for us? It's really easy. It speaks, which is really, really nice. It speaks whenever we touch a knob so that we know which parameter we are actually editing. It speaks whenever you repress any knob or key on the keyboard, not the playable range, but the additional keys, the additional buttons that we have so that we know what we're actually doing right now. It speaks all the names of the patches, instruments, vendors, the banks, the sub banks, the categories, and everything is basically speaking, which is awesome. We always know what we're doing right now. So these are the advantages that we have in terms of accessibility. The downsides, however, all of that is only available if you own a keyboard that can work with complete control, which is the Native Instruments line of keyboards. It starts with the cheapest one, which is the M32, a 32 key keyboard, which if you just want to use it for either working while traveling or is basically a controller to the complete control browser, this thing is really great. But it starts at $100, which might already be too much for someone who doesn't have a regular income or is living in a country where you really have to take care of your money. In such situations, you can, of course, use complete control without the keyboard, but you will lose most of the advantages that I've just explained to you. The only thing that you can do within complete control without using a complete control keyboard is load the snapshots that are provided by the library vendors, which can be helpful sometimes. And then you can access the properly mapped parameters via the parameters dialog in Reaper, for example, which can be useful from time to time. And you can use the other features that Complete Control adds, like the arpeggiator, for example, which can be really awesome and useful sometimes because Complete Control has built in arpeggiators and scale following and all this kind of neat little tricks that can help you shape your sound to where it needs to be. Other than that, there are really no huge advantages of doing it that way. Apart from having one simplified interface where you can work with any plugin, no matter if it's Reactor, Contact or whatever, Complete Control doesn't have any major advantages when using it without a Complete Control keyboard. But in case you want to know how it works, here it is. So. There is a free script available on accessformusic.com, link in the video description, which you can download and run on Windows only, that is. 
And as soon as you run it, you can open the FX chain by pressing F on the track that has complete control loaded. FX. Track one complete control dialog. List one list VST. Complete control. Native instruments GMBH. 30 throughout. 202. And then you can press Control Alt O. 0.2% slash Z. Load sound dialog. And in here. Data. You can select the patches. Let's press tab one so that you see which file types it can actually load. Data tip. Combo box quest slot group. Start dot end start dot map start dot end kt start dot end fm start dot kai start dot end ksn start dot end msv start dot end rkt start dot rkpl start dot end ksf start dot end ksr start dot wall start dot a start dot a collapse alt plus t. So this is a list of a lot of different files and file types that can be loaded. And in case you don't know which instrument a patch relates to you, then just fire up complete control and see if you can load it in there. It will most likely load the plugin that's required to play this file automatically and just allow you to play it via your keyboard. There is some good news, however. Complete control itself is free. The plugin that is, not the keyboard, obviously. But if you want to give it a try for yourself, there is complete control starter available on the Native Instruments website, and you can just grab it for free and install it via native access 2 or 1 if you're still running on that and then you can give complete control a try for yourself some other things you can do with the access for music script is quickly switch between patches but you won't get preview sounds and you won't get to read the name of the patch you're actually playing right now to quickly do that press alt 1 to go back to the previous patch and alt 2 to go to the next patch while currently in the fx chain with complete control selected in the FX list. And although there's probably so much more to talk about when looking at complete control, all of this is just relevant when talking about the keyboards because the Exosa Music script really doesn't allow you to do much more than that. For this video, that should be it. I know that a lot of people are struggling to get into the native instruments realm, and that's obviously understandable. It's really expensive, the libraries are, but the keyboards are as well. I myself only got an M32 because I'm not that big of a piano player and I don't have the space right now to actually get a much bigger keyboard. And I really love the flexibility that you get, that you can take it with you whenever you go somewhere. You can just grab it, pack it with you, and you will have your complete control keyboard always with you, which is not the case if you have like an S88 sitting over here. I really love that the thing itself speaks, that the browser is accessible and everything. That is really, really useful. I wouldn't want to live without it because it really allows you to have control over all your various instruments that you have. Complete Control also has a favorite feature where you can select patches and mark them as favorites, which is only available to the keyboard owners. And all of this is a thing that you should definitely think about getting at least an 32 which is obviously $100, but you probably won't regret it. It gives you so much more flexibility compared to the software-only solution. I sometimes use the complete access script for quickly loading patches that I already know which patches I need. And when I don't want to move away from my door because I don't have the space right now to actually grab my keyboard and play something, or I just want to quickly insert a new instrument and I already have the notes ready and just need to copy them over and everything. So sometimes for quick things and quick changes, using the script only is my way to go. But other than that, I would always grab my keyboard and browse through my patches to see if I can find the correct sound for the current situation. You need to see for yourself this video should be a guideline to what Complete Control actually is and to show you how you can use it and what you can do with it if you don't own or don't want to own a Complete Control keyboard. And I hope it helped you somewhat. Thanks for watching this video. If you've got any questions, you know, the comment sections below the video. If you liked the video, give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. If you want to get in touch directly, then check out my Twitter, which you can also find in the video description. Don't hesitate to get in touch. If you have any ideas on new videos that I should do, then write a short note in the comment box. I would definitely respond to any comment or at least like them if there's nothing to talk about. Thanks for watching the video. Until next time. Bye bye.